Okay, so accept the feeling, respond to the feelings. And then empathy and support. Empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings of others. And there are two kinds of em empathy. There are primary empathy, empathetic toward the person, uh, uh, toward the feeling expressed by the counselee. You feel hurt because of your family problem. Okay, so uh, sometimes a person would say, I feel hurt. And then we, uh, or uh, the person just, the way he express, the way he uh, expresses himself, the way he talks, shows that he is angry. So we empathize with that and then say, oh, I see that you are feeling angry. I know that uh, that you know, things uh, cause you to be frustrated and you're unhappy now. So that is what he has expressed. His, uh, that what the feelings that we can see or we, we can hear from his words. Okay, and then the advanced level of empathy is empathetic that the, uh, the situation has caused a deeper impact on the person. Now this is thinking about how that situation, how the feeling is affected the whole person. For instance, a person says, well, my wife is very angry with me. So his primary, you know, his primary feeling, when we have primary empathy with him, that we can say, oh, I can sense that you feel hurt when your wife is angry with you. You feel helpless because you don't know how to handle her feelings. So that's the primary feelings, the immediate, immediate feelings. And then there's the advanced level of empathy would be naming some deeper feelings and some consequences, some deeper consequences of that situation. So we can say that, well, I heard that you have, you know, your wife is angry with you and you find it difficult to relate to her and are you feeling a sense of failure in your marriage? Now that is a deeper feeling that he has not expressed. That he might feel, you know, that, that he is a failure in a marriage. And he might feel helpless. He might feel his life is, is in a ruin. His life is in a disaster. It's not just the marriage, his whole life is a disaster. So that's advanced level of empathy. For instance, a pastor says to us and says, oh, I can never preach well. So the primary empathy would be, oh, I sense that you feel unhappy that you cannot preach well. So that's the primary, the immediate uh, feelings that shows. And then the advanced level of empathy would be uh, something like this, I heard that you feel um, frustrated when you preach and I heard that you, you know, you find that ministry is difficult. Uh, you find that uh, every time you preach you have more pressure. So I sense that you are uh, having a sense of failure in your ministry. You feel frustrated in your ministry. You, you might be questioning about your ability to perform well in the ministry. Is that right? So that is an advanced level to that how that thing that, that just happened, the incident that just happened, how is, it shows a deeper problem, a deeper problem in the person's life. So this is very helpful when we try to explore the life of a person and help the person to realize his feelings about his whole life, about the whole situation, so that we can work on that. It's not just working on the superficial, superficial feelings, 
uh, not, uh, but also his deeper feelings, his deeper concern, his deeper senses. Okay, so your marriage problem has made you feel like a failure. So that's a uh, advanced level of empathy that you feel a sense of failure. You feel that you cannot do anything well. So it's not just one thing. It's you feel that you cannot do anything well. Your friend has made you feel you are unwanted and dis disposable. So this is, you know, like for instance, the person says, well, my friend doesn't respond to me. Uh, then the s immediate feeling, the primary empathy will be saying, well, oh, you feel left out, you feel unhappy, you feel sad when your friend doesn't respond to you. But the advanced level of empathy will be able to say, well, I sense that you are you're feeling unwanted by your friend, that your friend just rejects you and you feel left out, that you feel that this friendship is leaving you. So that's deeper and also maybe a deeper level is you find it hard to relate to people, right? So you ask the question, you don't assume if it's not obvious. We can ask them, so do you feel that you're, you, are, you are facing problems relating to different people? So that's empathy, okay? And then empathy and support. We accept the feelings of the counselee. We verbalize his feelings, verbalize. We say it out. Oh, I, f I sense that you are feeling lonely. You're feeling hurt. And then empathize what he has experienced. So, so we have this feeling, oh, if it were me that is experiencing them, uh, experiencing that thing, that uh, incident, I would feel very sad, I would feel very unhappy, I would feel frustrated. So we empathize, I say, oh, I sense your unhappiness, I sense your sense of failure. And then don't despise the counselee and his difficulties. Now, in person, you might think, well, that's too easy, you know, that how can you be hurt so easily? So that is despising the counselee and saying, well, that's too easy. You don't, you don't have to feel so bad. Now, we, also, we never want to compare and say, well, if it were me in that situation, I would not be hurt by the person. But he's not you. So we have to understand that different people have different levels. We don't want to compare. And we want to accept the feelings. Uh, don't despise them. And then five, verbally appreciate how the counselee has shared or has imp uh, he's improved. So we appreciate, oh, you are doing well. You have told me, you have trust in me and you have told me about your feelings. So I, I appreciate that. And then tell the counselee that God and we can feel his feelings. So God feels your feeling and I can feel your feeling. And then uh, more about empathy and support. We care about his feelings and accept his feelings. I know that you're suffering now. I know that it was difficult for you. So we know that, we accept that, we care about that, I care about your feeling. Two, we name the feeling. And I, I know that you feel hurt or sad or neglected by people, ignored by people, despised by people or feel guilty. Three, if we feel his feeling, we can tell him that, uh, that I, I feel his feelings to let him know that he, we feel his feeling. For instance, we say, I can feel your pain. I can feel your sadness. I can feel hurts. I can feel hopelessness. I can feel your hopelessness. And four, we can also verify with him. It looks like your experience has made you feel despised. Is that correct? that ex your experience has made you feel uh, suppressed. You feel suppressed. Is that true? Hopeless or inferior? Is that true? Five, we let, we let him know that we, are, we will go through the process of healing with him. So that is support. I want to go through this with you. I'll help you. 
Okay, and then the next in the counseling is to guide the counselee to analyze the situation and the problem. To analyze it. We can ask these questions. Where do you think the problem comes, comes from? So where does the problem came from? Uh, so the problem, is it just a financial problem? Or is it also a relational problem? Or a spiritual problem? What are affecting you now? So maybe uh, the finance, but maybe it's a relationship. So find out what is affecting him now. Uh, his, uh, you know, he, he wants his family to be better, but it's not, uh, it's not going well, so he feels frustrated, so that that affecting the person. Four, do you think this problem just came from him? So if the person says, oh, it's his fault, so we can ask him, do you think the problem just came from him? And when he talks to you like that, did you, how did you respond to him? Did you show any emotions? So could your emotion affect him also? So we, we find out if it's just his, the other person's problem or also he has his, his, uh, who, he has his problem too. And what are some factors that affect you both? What are some factors? It could be uh, the uh, lack of communication or uh, some unresolved problem, some unforgiveness, some frustration in the past. And what are some factors? Uh, okay, number six. And what are the root problems? Now, sometimes the root problem could be other problem. For instance, self-image. For instance, someone he uh, always feel hurts. Now, when someone says something that really is not intended to hurt him, but he feels hurt. So it could be his own self-image because he feels very inferior about himself. He feels low about himself. He has a low self-image. So it, that could be the problem instead of uh, what the other people said. And then the root problem may be the relationship, that he doesn't, just doesn't like his wife. He doesn't want the relationship. He, he's frustrated with the relationship. He wants to be out. Now when we realize it, when we realize the problem is there, then we can work on it. But some people will say, wow, if I say he really want to get out of the marriage, that would make him want to divorce. Now, then the person might avoid it. But avoiding the problem doesn't resolve it. When we hear that the person really want to get out of the marriage, then we want to listen to that instead of shifting. Now some people, they say, well, this is too big a problem. He cannot have that feeling. He cannot have the feeling. He cannot, he cannot want to get out of the marriage. Then we suppress it and don't want to talk about it. That way, he's feeling of frustrated about marriage, he wants to get out of the marriage, will not go away. We need to face it with boldness, with courage to, to face it. So if the problem is the marriage or his sensitivity, is it too sensitive? Uh, when the person says that to you, do you think uh, any person will feel so sad as you? And then also maybe his past hurts that has not been healed or that he feels despised by, despised by people and unresolved emotions that, uh, that he has some emotions that is not resolved or communication problem or unrealistic expectation of him, of people. He expect his wife to understand every thought of him and he did not tell his wife and he expect his wife to understand him that you know how can his wife understand him if he doesn't tell her or the problem of controlling he wants to control his wife control his church so these are some root problems let me say this okay you just listen to me once you might forget so but you can go over this 
on Facebook over and over again, and I can send you the the PDF. But it is very big, you know, because I have a lot of teachings in it. It's very big now, and uh, but I can send you uh, uh, if you want it, so you can tell me. Okay, and guide the counselee to imagine the best scenario for the future. So we can ask the counselee if everything changes for the best. Can you describe the best outcome of this of the situation? For instance, the marriage has problem, and then we can say, well, can, can you imagine if your wife can forgive you now, and and then you can she can communicate with you, listen to you, and you can communicate with her, and she won't get angry with you. Can you imagine that picture? Now, what what is the purpose of this? The purpose is that so that you can visualize how beautiful it will be. How good it would be if the wife can forgive him and he can forgive her. How beautiful would uh, that would be, and also that they can communicate peacefully without yelling at each other. So, so that's imagining the scenario. The best scenario would be helpful for them to have a good picture of the future. Imagine the person affecting you changes or you change. How it would be like. If your wife changed totally, or you, uh, that you have this first love for her, as you had for her before. And number three, do you believe the best scenario can happen if you, if he and you change? Do you think we can strive for that goal with God's help? Do you think it's possible? You know to, that we can really reach that, that best scenario. That is, uh, do you believe that it can happen if both of you change? Do you think you can work on it? And number four, is it possible to reach the goal at least to a certain extent? So at least to a certain extent, is it possible to reach that goal? And then guide the counselee to think of ways to work on the problems, to find solutions. So what can you do to receive more strength from God so that you can have more peace? And then, what can you do to help yourself emotionally? So, if the person has strong emotional problem, so what can you do to help yourself emotionally? Maybe by praying, by relaxing, by thinking about the goodness of God, by taking a walk, by ha having a nap. Uh, sometimes, when person is very emotional, it's good to have a rest first, so that you're not. Affected strongly by that person who hurt you, and by the situation. So, how can you over help yourself emotionally? Maybe by praising God, you have more strength, your more spiritual strength and emotional strength. Do you think the person can only has bad motives? Has he done anything good to you? So sometimes, person criticizes about their person, and then we can say, Do you think that he's only doing bad things? Did he do good things? Do you think he wants to hurt you? Did he do anything to make you feel happy? Does he do anything to help you? So if the person says yes, he has done some good things, but he just have other bad things, then we can work on the good things and appreciate the good things he has done, so that the good things will gradually cover the bad things, and the, uh, the good things will become stronger and stronger. So it's very, very often, for marriage. Sometimes they think just think about the the bad things. And uh, actually, there are good things there. They can think about and say, "Well, the marriage really does have future, does have a future." Okay, guide the counselor to think of ways to work on the problem. Five. If you treat him nicely, do you think he might change a little bit? Now, sometimes. You know, even if the other person is very frustrated, angry, but if we change, we treat him nicely. That maybe it will change the situation. Number six, how can you, how can you treat him nicer and build a better relationship with him? So these are all questions to guide the person to think of ways to overcome the problem. So how can you treat him better, nicer? What do you need to do? That. When we think about the goodness of this person, how does God think about this person? Does He have any good thing about Him? 
If he has good things about him, can I appreciate that and make him feel better? And seven, is there a way that you two can communicate peacefully about the problem? So we think of ways, you know, we guide the person to think of how is it possible that you can communicate peacefully. And then number eight, what he has done, when he has done good to you, what can you do to encourage him? So we ask him and then, uh, and then if the person cannot say it, then we can say, well, can you appreciate him? Can you say, you have done something good, I, I like that. Nine, what can you do when he treats you badly? So if you get frustrated, what can you do? So we guide the person to think, well, even when he's frustrated, we can speak peacefully. We can say, well, I see that you are frustrated. I'm sorry about that and, and uh, I like to work on that. I would like to improve our relationship. So we can um, guide a person to think, you know, what if the person, you know, uh, is angry? How can you not to take it personally? Now, that's something I talk about in the five steps of victory. That when we realize that we are affected by someone who is angry, and we know that it's destructive, and then three, what does the Bible say? Four, pray to get to have forgiveness and strength and then five choose to obey God so if the person is angry with me I can say well it is his problem I don't have to be angry because he's angry I don't have to be frustrated I can speak peacefully and God will be happy with me and when I speak peacefully maybe he will change so that is the thing, you know, to change the mentality that we don't have to yell at someone if someone yells at us. Ten, do you want me to give you some suggestions of how to handle the problem? So if the person cannot think of ways, then we can say, can, you, uh, can I give you some suggestions? And then the next step, help the counselee to help start to change. So check with the counselee whether there are internal and external resistance to handling the problem. For instance, okay, we, we talk about how we can overcome the problem. If the person is angry, what can he do? He can just say, well, uh, he's angry now. I can just say, okay, I sense that you're angry, you're frustrated, and I know that is not easy for you, and uh, can we find a way, uh, find a way to uh, resolve this problem. So, is there resistance in the heart to say, I don't want to say that, I don't want to say that. Um, I don't want to be nice to him when he's angry. So why, why do we have this resistance? So we ask the person, because we have anger ourselves. We think it's unfair we, we want to do something bad to the person. We want to yell at the person because of our sinful nature, because of our anger. So, so those are some reasons that stop us from changing. changing. So we want to find out the, what stops us from changing. So can he treat the other person? Uh, does he want to do it? Does he want to change? Uh, does he want to be nicer to the other person? Can he empathize uh, the other, uh, with the other person? Can he forgive? Is he willing to forgive? What are some things that stop you from overcoming the problem, from working on the problem? And uh, so can, can he manage his emotions? So what, what are hindering him from managing his emotions? And can he work on it? How will the other person respond when you change? So if you change, how would the person, you know, if you are nice to him, uh, how would he change? So we, we try to help the person to overcome this resistance because some people just want to, don't want to, want to forgive. They just don't want to be nice to the spouse. 
they they always want to blame the spouse so these are hindrances so how can he overcome those hindrances and then guide the person to have the motivation to change what is the motivation if we change then we'll be blessed by God will improve our life will improve and God will be happy with us so that's the motivation when we work on things we'll become a better person you know for me I always want to I always want to uh, do the best I can so I can obey God's will that God will bless me and then guide him how to adjust his thinking and emotions how to calm himself down in order to change his attitude and action so so guide him how to adjust his thinking you know how he you know maybe his thinking is oh his wife is hopeless his wife is you know is uh, is mistreating him so how can he adjust that thinking is his wife treating him badly all the time does his wife do anything good to him so to adjust his thinking does he have to be always the uh, the uh, you know the wife does does the wife have to submit to him all the time because the Bible does say submit to one another so it's not just uh, the wife submitting to the husband the husband should also submit to the wife in certain ways so can he change his thinking how to calm down calm himself down in order to change his attitude and action how can he uh, calm himself down and then for guide him how to change his behavior for instance his behavior of yelling at people easily of getting frustrated easily or are not being punctual so how can we change um, guy give him assignments of what to do in order to handle the problem so um, give him assignments you know so so what are some assignments uh, for instance go home and talk with your wife listen to your wife and and communicate with your wife or, or spend more time praising God and so do you have more peace and also go home and handle your hurt feelings in the past how can you have healing from the past and give him encouragement for instance you can do it I appreciate I applaud your effort I see that you have this strength I believe you will succeed you will enter God's perfect plan and uh, and then we set a time to follow up okay the follow-up okay the, this is the last part check with him how the condition are after the last session so after the first session you know how is it going now find out what he has done to adjust his uh, his emotions and his actions so what he has done uh, has he what uh, improved his emotions and his actions and find out if there is any improvement find out what problems are still there find out the reasons for the improvement on the or the lack of improvement why he has improved why he has not improved applaud him of any improvement if he has improved say you are doing well you're doing great you're improving God is happy with you I'm happy with you and what do you do if he has not done anything so if their person has not done anything so wh what did you do uh, and then adjust assignment according to his condition and motivation so so these are the uh, steps of counseling uh, now basically if I simplify I simplify it's easier for you to remember to build a good relationship with the person to listen and empathize with the person and respond to the person and in the process uh, calm him down if he's very frustrated sometimes we can pray with him so that he's calmed down uh, and then guide him to find out the source of his problem and find out the problem find out the problem first and then the source of his problem and and then explore with him ask questions uh, you know what are the if the, uh, the best scenario if something good happened uh, that your relationship totally improved how would that be so imagine and then explore how you can work on a marriage how you can work on yourself how you can work on your feelings so explore how 
to overcome certain problems, ways to solve the problem, and then uh, what are some hindrances? What could hinder, hinder the improvement? And then how can we make it work? And then uh, encourage him and then a follow up later. Okay? So these are the steps. And uh, next time I might talk about some real situation, uh, not, not really real in the sense that actually someone has that problem, but in the sense that, okay, what if? Uh, uh, that the person has depression, so what are possible steps to help the person? If the person is, uh, gets angry easily, if a person uh, cannot relate to people, if a person has a problem in the marriage, what can we do? So, so we can talk about different situations. Okay, so here I see some questions here. Um, so what do you do when your leader who should guide you instead he com commands shouts at you speaks all negative about you and you are in a very low situation feeling guilty of what you have done okay now uh, this is difficult because when many people they have the habit of yelling at people commanding people criticizing people that many people have this habit. In order to change this culture, we need to have more training. That people need to understand that yelling, criticizing doesn't uh, resolve problem and doesn't make the church a beautiful place. With yelling and commanding and criticizing, it's just going to make things worse. So, uh, but sometimes they are our superior. So what can we do? Now first we don't get angry, we don't get frustrated, we handle our feelings. And then, uh, if possible, we can say something like this. Uh, I'm willing to work on it. Can we talk about this in a peaceful way? Can we, uh, you know, I'm willing to work on it and and uh, can we pray together first? Uh, can we reduce the amount of criticism? Now, I'm sorry I've done this, but can we reduce the amount of criticism so that we can face this problem peacefully? Now, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard. And then maybe instead of talking, we can uh, send him a WhatsApp message and say, you know, I appreciate your effort to try to work on the situation, work on the problem. Uh, can we talk about this more peacefully with less criticism so that it's easier to talk about it? So is it possible? So sometimes uh, with indirect communication with the WhatsApp uh, would be better. But sometimes we have to accept that person doesn't want to change. Sometimes some people they have, in the whole lifetime, they just yell at people. They don't listen to people. They don't care about other people's feelings. Some people are like that. Then we can do nothing. We can just accept, but we can do nothing to change him, but we can change ourselves and say, okay, I don't take that. I don't uh, mind that. I will work on myself. And I will tell him. Now, in order to s calm down the other person, the best way is to say, well, okay, I heard what you said. I work on it. I'm sorry about that. I, I will work on it. Uh, I, I really i am sorry for what I've done, and I hope you can forgive me. So we can say things nicely to the person so that the situation will, uh, uh, the, the emotions will be calmer. Uh, so we want to calm down the emotions instead of making things worse. Okay. Okay, and so I hope you all get help and please all send your photos in the photo group, okay? Now, while I'm still concluding, you can take the photos right now and send to the photo group. Okay, let's conclude with the prayer. And I hope that you, you're all convinced that listening is very important, counseling is very important, 
that counseling doesn't necessarily mean a counseling session. Counseling can be just in daily conversation. Counseling can just be in cell groups, in evangelism, in talking with your spouse, with the children, anytime. We can use their skills to listen to the person, empathize with the person. Empathizing with people already would make things much better when we say, oh, I heard that you feel very sad. I'm sorry about that. Oh, and then uh, trying to identify the feeling. Do you feel hurt? Do you feel frustrated? Do you feel left out? Do you feel despised? So, so we can, when we can name the feelings and respond to the feelings and empathize with the person, the person already feel very good. The person will feel better. And then we can guide people to find ways to change. So those are very helpful. Okay. Um, okay, let's pray now. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you. We praise you and thank you because you, you care about our feeling. You care about our problems, our situations. You care about us. Please help us to have peace from you, to have strength from you, so that we can handle our problems and we can manage problems with people and we can counsel people. Oh Lord, we need to learn all these ways to listen to people, to respond to them, to empathize with them, to guide them to express more and to help them to visualize the best scenario and to think of ways how to resolve the problem and have the motivation to change, uh, to work on the problem. Lord, help us to guide people and guide ourselves also. We ourselves need to change. We ourselves need to build up our relationship with our spouse, our children, our family members, our church members. Lord, we need to improve. Give us wisdom. Give us patience to listen to people. Guide us, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're wonderful. You're the wonderful counselor. Thank you, Jesus. You counsel us so many times to comfort us. That's wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. We appreciate you. Mm -hmm.